brightest minds in mine rescue from around the world are in Sudbury today. Getting a closer look at the latest technology and trends in the business. CTV's Gordon Nichols reports. Two Chinese miners returned safely to the surface this week after spending several days being trapped underground. It's the kind of ending everyone prays for, but it doesn't just happen. It's the result of the work done by trained, experienced mine rescue personnel from China to Poland to Canada. And this week is part of the ongoing effort to share knowledge among those that do the work. More than 80 people are attending the 2013 conference of the International Mines Rescue Body. Alex Griska is the director of Ontario Mine Rescue and the international group's secretary treasurer. Things tend to repeat themselves, so we have to learn from one another uh, what happens in one jurisdiction and share that information with one another. And learn about the latest technology, whether that's a high-pressure cutting tool that uses a mix of sand and water, or thermal imaging cameras. Uh, equipment operator is able to uh, identify an unconscious person from over 2,000 feet away. Um, this one here is actually uh, a pan and tilt model, so they have the ability to uh, see a little bit better sometimes than a, a handheld thermal camera. Or updated technology on standard mine rescue equipment like breathing apparatus. We invented the first uh, rebreather back in 19, 1905, uh, and Ontario Mine Rescue have been using a similar product of draggers since 1960s. So that product and that technology hasn't changed very much. Um, what's really changed is the, uh, the, the technology behind it. Those two Chinese mine workers were among 12 who were trapped after a coal mine flooded. China joined the International Mines Rescue Body in 2003, the same year as Canada. Gord Nichols, CTV News, Sudbury. Want the travel card that lets you pay for any travel with points?